in Acts 1 verse 8 it says but you shall receive power dunamis that's the Greek word when the Holy Spirit has come upon you you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world ends of the earth even warming stuff we are quite a distance from from Israel when that was where that was spoken quite a distance from Jerusalem but he means here as well anywhere look at the wording here he says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you not if when so God is expecting people who believe in him to have the Holy Spirit come upon them and he says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you not in you the Holy Spirit is in you present within you when you get born again Jesus is present in your life by the Holy Spirit when you get born again he comes upon you when you get baptized the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues amen that's when the power comes he said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you not before or some other way you will receive it then the power of the Holy Spirit is in you and that Greek word for power there is dunamis from which we get the words dynamite dynamo and dynamic you know power there's a bit of power there if something is something going on and it's dynamic it has a big effect dynamo I don't know if you if you do but I remember the days when I used to have a little uh, dynamo on my bike and when I pedaled along I flicked this little thing and the wheel on it touched the tire of my uh, bike and uh, put electricity into the lights front and back when you stand with that you had to stop at traffic lights lights went out and they're a bit more efficient nowadays but the key was the dynamo produced it and you all know about dynamite it blows things up you know something could be there one minute and you put dynamite to effect and it's not there anymore like doubt and unbelief that's what this dynamic stuff is about this is power is about this is the most powerful use of the word power in the Bible dunamis a fantastic amazing power that we can't actually comprehend we just have to believe what the Bible says yeah still a lot of things in the Bible my head is going you what yeah but my spirit says yes please I'll have that so we've got the power of God operating in us it says here you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jer everywhere you shall be so you get the power come on you you get baptized the Holy Spirit and you immediately are a witness for God what does a witness say a witness said I saw it happen this is what I saw happening and that's the whole idea of being a witness it's not just some people get scared with the word evangelism or evangelizing it's not about that it's about being a witness it's about going telling somebody else what you experienced what you saw what effect it's had on your life so they can have the same effect on theirs amen hallelujah and you are his witnesses now everywhere you go wherever you go you are his witness you are able whenever you stand in front of anybody to tell them what's happened to you there's nothing to stop you you have got the power to do it now and any obstacles that get in the way blow them up with the dynamite blow them up with the dynamic power that's going on inside of you you see this is why we know every believer should should be uh, spirit filled and praying tongues because you won't get this power otherwise it says you'll get the power when that happens so we're going to be believing for that in Jesus name in 2 Timothy 1 7 it says for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power dunamis again and love the word agape in Greek and of a sound mind there is a spirit of fear about there is definitely a spirit of fear about but any fear that it's about did not come from God yeah anything that's, that's fearful is not from God it's from the devil it can be, be affected by people as well but a hundred percent it can't possibly be from God 
the spirit we have received from him, from the Lord, is of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The power means a dynamic spirit displaying God's power in you. God's power is in you, and he wants to display it. He wants to show it. He wants people to see it. And the, 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 the word love there is the Greek word agape, which is the God kind of love. It's the kind of love God is. So when you've got, got that love in you, you've got God in you. And you know, God is love. We remember that from 1 John. God is love. And if God is love and he's in you, you have love in you. Amen? And then it says sound mind. That means, that phrase there means to exercise moderation, self-control. So the love in you is a bit like uh, your average nuclear explosion. It's a bit big. It's a bit different to the average. Um, so what it does, whilst keeping yourself and your flesh from getting in the way, your mind is not allowed to get in the way because the spirit stops it getting in the way. So the love can flow and the power can flow out from you. And the power of love in you is greater than any evil that could ever come your way. Love conquers all evil. No matter what's going on there, the power of love that's in you from God is greater than any evil. If it gets in the way, just blow it up. I'm going to use that phrase a few times here because we've got dynamite going on inside of you. You are powerful in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now here's a, here's a scripture. I don't know how many times I've read this scripture, but I found out something new from it, like you do when you keep reading the Bible. I don't know if you get to the point where you... I think I heard somebody say something the other day about reading the Bible. They said, well, I've read it. Well, I've read it. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times. Hundreds, thousands of times, maybe. I know I've read it, the whole Bible, all the way through, at least once, because when we first went to Germany, before I left the army, uh, a friend gave us a new Bible. So we decided the best way we can apply this new Bible is that every single night, for a whole year, I read out 10 minutes, for 10 minutes I read from the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. It took me a year, and I read it out loud while we were in bed, just to go out to go to sleep. So I read it out, and Pastor Janet heard it, so we've heard at least the Bible at least once. And I've read it so many times. The thing is, the more you read it, the more you can find out from it. There's so many scriptures, you look at it and you see something new. Here's one. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Never seen that phrase before. Never actually twigged before with my... He gives life to your mortal body. Not your spiritual body or your soul or your, to your physical, mortal, fleshly body. He gives life to it. No wonder you get healed. When you get born again, you have the life of God in your body. He gives life to your body. That's another thing. When sickness and disease is coming your way, you can say, no, 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 no. I've got the life of God in me. You can push off. And guess what? It'll have to go in Jesus' name. So the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and his power. That's one, another one of these things. That's my keep seeing this in my mind, the number of things, I must make a list one day, the things that I believe in my spirit, my head still struggles with. This is one of these, the very power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, dwells in you. That is awesome. That is so awesome, my natural brain can't take it in. Thank goodness it's my spirit that needs to take it in and not my brain. Amen. He's not giving life to your spirit or to your soul, but to your mortal, fleshly, physical body. Your physical body has the life of God living in it. 
No wonder you can cope with stuff when the things are going bad. No wonder you get healed easily. You've got the life of God operating in you. And when that happens, you've got something in you that can defeat all sickness, disease, and lack in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, The God who is rich in mercy because of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Hallelujah. If you haven't been saved yet today, there's the scripture. When you were still dead in your trespasses. In other words, you still you haven't accounted for your sins, repented of your sins or anything. You're still in that place where you don't know Jesus. He loves you and he wants you to be part of his kingdom. Don't ever let anyone or anything say you're not worthy. Amen? The Bible's already said that. You weren't worthy. Nobody was worthy. Nobody could possibly be worthy of coming to God. That's why Jesus had to make us worthy by his sacrifice, by his love. You can't make yourself worthy either. I know a lot of people who try their best to they do the good things and they read their Bibles maybe and do good things for people but because they're not saved they're not worthy yet they're still not worthy Jesus has made us worthy to come to the Father and call him Abba, Father, Daddy Amen while we were still sinners he loved us while you were still a sinner he loved you there's no way that you can get yourself ready for that. The grace of God saved you through Jesus. We can't clean ourselves up enough to come to Jesus. A phrase I heard a long time ago, Jesus catches the fish first and then cleans them. Like the natural people do. You don't, you don't wait for the, you don't put a hook out and expect to catch a, a gutted and cleaned and ready to, ready to eat fish. No, you catch a, a fish which then needs to be dealt with and get rid of all the yuck out of it that you're not going to eat. Well, we were like fish as far as he's concerned. He caught us, he hooked us, he brought us into the kingdom and took all the rubbish out. Absolutely, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God created light in the first place. Do you remember the scripture in, in Genesis where it says, God said, let there be light and there was light. The original Hebrew says, God said, light be, light was. Just like that. that. Interesting, God said, let there be light, and there was. Then he created the sun and the moon and the stars. What was the light he created? Jesus Christ. He created the possibility for the, for the light of heaven, Jesus Christ, to come to earth and declare himself, I am the light of the world. While I'm in this earth, I am the light of the world. He's not in this earth now, physically. We are the light of the world now. So God created light in the first place, has now shone in our hearts to create life. This is how this means. To create life in us through our knowledge of Jesus. Create light in us through our knowledge of Jesus. But he's put, again, this is our earthen vessel, our earthen bodies here, our unsaved bodies. He's put this treasure of light in our earthen vessel bodies to prove that the light and the power behind it could have only come from him. People will look at you and I and think there's no way you can have the light of God in you unless he did it. There's no way you can have the power of God operating in your life unless he did it. That's exactly where we're at. The more you know about Jesus, the greater the light's going to flow in you. That's another reason to get to know Jesus more. Because the more light, the more life. The more life, the more changing you, 
the more changing you where light and power is concerned will affect other people to get saved. When people see you, they he see his light in you and recognize that must be God's power. It couldn't possibly be that person, I know them. Somebody in Germany one time was, uh, had met me and knew I was a Christian and went back to his, his own um, barracks and told his boss, who said to him, how did it get on? Did you meet your new boss? He said, yeah, I did. He said, what, who's his name? Stephen Wood. I said, uh, the man said, yeah, he's a Christian. And uh, the man said, no, he's a great drinking buddy of mine. There's no way that could happen. There must be two Stephen Woods. He couldn't, it was impossible to think that the person he knew could become a Christian. That's what this is saying here. They, they can't comprehend that that could be possible. It just has to be God. And what we need to realize too is, as a Christian, you are the closest thing to God any unsaved person will ever see. You are God's agent, God's representative, God's light and God's power in this earth. And you are the closest thing to God that an unsaved person will ever see. They're waiting for you to tell them about it. They're waiting for you to be the witness and tell them, this is what happened to me, this is how I got saved, it can happen to you as well. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. We speak about God's kingdom by our words. I'm doing that right now. I'm speaking about God's kingdom and his love and grace and mercy and everything by my words. But the true nature of God's kingdom, it says here, is power. The true nature of God's kingdom is power. I remember we, uh, we had some um, people come to our door one day, some Jehovah's Witnesses, and they were offering me a, a, a pamphlet which talked about the kingdom of God. I said, oh, this is about the kingdom of God. Yeah, he said, it's about the kingdom of God. I said, can you define the kingdom of God? And he said, well, no. I said, well, the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? And he was running down the road, so didn't find out the answer to that. If we do speak about the kingdom, about healing, or about salvation, we should be able to back that up by the power. We've got the power in us for somebody to get saved. We've got the power in us for somebody to get healed or set free or delivered. We've got that power, but you should be able to demonstrate it about it. Talking about kingdom healing brings kingdom power for healing into the situation and heals the sick. We always expect, if somebody comes up here and preaches about healing, we expect people to be healed at the end of it. Because the healing is going out and we expect there to be a power manifestation to back up those words. Amen? That's what God wants to do. Yes, he wants us to talk about the kingdom with words, but then he wants it backed up with power so that the person gets saved or healed or whatever it is what God is saying here is that the kingdom of God is best demonstrated rather than just talked about yeah many of you have, in, have been in uh, in jobs throughout your life and people who have been in the army will know the number of times you don't just get taught you are shown how it works it's demonstrated to you physically how it works. You remember that better than just words. And when you see the power of God operating in a person's life, when you see the power of God healing somebody, it means much more to you than somebody just saying there's power in God. When you see it, it becomes real to you. I would say, don't tell people that God can, be, can heal them without being willing to demonstrate it. It's not no much point of you just telling them that people can get healed without you then saying, so let me pray with you now. I've done that to I, countless numbers of people. I, said, I did that for a lady on, on Thursday in Hedford House. I said, how are you doing? She said, oh, I've got this sciatica and it's really painful. She said, it shouldn't be and I've prayed and it's still there. 
I said, well, we'd better come into agreement about it then, wouldn't we? So we prayed and we came into agreement and she felt better. Why? Because the power was there. We didn't just talk about it. I didn't just say, oh, that's a shame, never mind, and walk on to somebody else. No. I wanted the power to be demonstrated too. And there was the opportunity. She said she wasn't well. And if somebody says to you, no, I'm not feeling so good, you say, I'm going to pray for you then. God will change that. Pray. There's two things about praying for the sick. One is, God does not say, and anyway, I've checked it, does not say in the Bible that you should ask their permission. You check it out, you check it out if you like. It doesn't say, if, as long as they're happy for you to do it. It doesn't say that. It just says, believers will lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. Amen? It also doesn't say in the Bible that believers lay hands on the sick and pray. Yeah, it's good to pray, but it doesn't say you have to. So that means if you're a believer, you can be laying hands, you can put your hand on somebody's shoulder, and you're praying for them inside, they don't even know. It doesn't, they don't even know. It does not say you have to pray with them. It says believers lay hands, what God's saying is, believers, you lay hands on the sick, I'll sort the rest out. Yeah, because the healing bit has got nothing to do with us. Absolutely nothing to do with us. It'll be his power through us that does it. It'll be his words that we spoke in the first place. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 15:13. Uh, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to be filled with all joy and all peace in your believing in him and your believing in Jesus. So then you can abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And our hope is a Holy Spirit empowered hope. And it's not a human hope. Well, I hope so. It's not that kind of hope. It's the kind of hope which says, well, if the Bible says it, that settles it. And my hope, therefore, is that what I've just prayed is going to happen because I've just prayed the Bible. And when you pray the Bible, you get the answer in Jesus' name. This is the, it's not just a natural, normal hope. It's the dunamis powered hope from God. Creating such hope inside us, we can believe anything the Bible says and anything God says. We just automatically believe it because the hope has been empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have this kind of dynamite powered hope that cannot be defeated. And that means when you have Bible hope, you can't be defeated either. You cannot be defeated. You cannot be defeated. Because you have God's hope in you, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Do not miss hope that empowers you and blesses you. We need to let this power out. We need to let this power out so that people can see it. And get used to the fact that you can go and you can be, because you already are God's witnesses, just go and tell somebody what happened to you and how it blessed you. I was about, the other day, it was quite funny actually, I was in... Uh, coffee number one in Warminster and I was getting a, a coffee for Pastor Janet and uh, so I'd ordered it and I'd paid for it on my little app thing and uh, I just turned then to walk to the other end of the counter and there was a lady with her back to me and I thought is that Marion? And Julie's sister-in-law is Marion lovely looking lady and, and I, I, reckon, I thought I recognised the hair, I thought is that Marion? So I'm still staring at her when she turns around. So I said, sorry, I'm staring at you a bit there. When you had your back to me, I thought you looked like a friend of mine. Your hair is such, such almost the same. She said, oh, is it? I said, yeah, and, and she's beautiful too. And she went, what a lovely thing to say. I said, well, you know. It's just, and she said, have you been, you know, dishing out compliments like this for very long? I said, well, I'm 78. She said, you never are. I said, yes, I am. She don't look 78. I said, oh, I cheat. She said, how do you cheat? I said, I get Jesus to look after me. That's all I said. She's gone away thinking about that now. 
Is she going to get saved? You better believe she's getting saved. Will I be involved? I don't know. It's not my problem. I just did what I believe God wanted me to say. You know, and when people say about giving up alcohol or smoking or something like that, I always say the same. Yeah, but I cheated. I got help. Oh, how did you get help? Well, I asked Jesus to help me. And he does. He helps you. So we want that power getting out, telling people, because we're the witnesses. We're the, you know there's no other group of people on the planet except the Christians who can get somebody saved. Muslims, the Hindus, the Sikhs, they, they can't do it. They don't know God like we do. And not only do we know God, he knows us. And he's declared that we are his witnesses, we have his power, we have his love and grace and mercy operating in our life. We even have the very love of God himself in our life so we can tell people about Jesus. So let me encourage you. If there's anybody here who's been born again, but you're not spirit-filled, or you've, somebody's prayed with you once, but you're struggling with uh, praying in tongues, come and see me afterwards. Or if you've never given your life to Jesus, come and see me or speak to somebody that you came with and they'll speak to you about Jesus so you'll get yourself saved. And then we know that God wants to bless us and that's why we do things like, like have banquets. That's why we're having that banquet we talked about. Because we love being together. And we're fellowshipping with one another and we feel better when we come away from a fellowship like that. Because we know that every one of you has got God's power in you, you've got his love in you, you've got his hope in you, and we can, we can partake of that love and power and hope as well. Amen? So we thank you, Father, for, for this day. We thank you for blessing us with your word. We thank you for bringing peace and comfort, Lord. I thank you for helping anyone who's not been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in tongues to come and speak so, look to me, Lord, so that you can sort this out for them, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for your blessing get anyone saved who's not saved yet in Jesus name bring your peace Lord